I'm your host, Jason Tardik, and welcome to Trading Secrets. We talk all things money on this podcast, and we're teaching all the stuff we just weren't taught in the classroom. Nothing supports this show more than liking, commenting, and of course, subscribing. Welcome back to another episode of Trading Secrets. Today, we are joined by entrepreneur and reality TV personality, best known for her role on Bravo's The Real Housewives of New Jersey, the one, the only, Dolores Catania. Did we nail that last name? You did. You said it perfectly. Perfect. Dolores joined the cast back in 2016 and was voted as fan favorite Miss Congeniality across the entire Real Housewives franchise back in 2018. Her passion for charitable work and helping those less fortunate has made her one of the more relatable and likable cast members on the show. In addition to her role on the show, Dolores likes to express her entrepreneurial spirit after opening her own fitness center in addition to flipping homes with her ex-husband, which is well documented on the show. Today, we are going to discuss all things Real Housewives of New Jersey, her entrepreneurial and philanthropic endeavors, and what her approach will be when she joins the cast of Traders for season three, which will come out next year. Dolores, thank you so much for being on Trading Secrets. Hi, thanks for having me. So excited to have you here. Now, you have been traveling, you've been on TV. We just saw Real Housewives of New Jersey just finished up. That last was a night. lot of mayhem last night. I didn't watch it because I was um, coming back from South Africa. So you haven't seen it at all? No. Have you seen like, do you like... I this- saw the finale because I was on Watch What Happens Live last week. Of course. So yeah. they showed it to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, before Have, I left. Do yeah. you pay attention to, because like I was on TikTok and there's all these TikToks that people are talking about, your reaction to things. Like, do you watch the noise on the internet? I can't. You just stay away from it. I stay away from it. Yeah. I stay very far away from it. Okay. And there's also times that I will not watch the episode because I don't want to get mad at somebody I was on. I don't want to relive the things that I went through back then. Yeah, I so, get that. You know, it's like I'm not gonna traumatic stress. Yeah, it's like going back to and it. I don't, I don't want to fight with somebody on the internet who's just negative, who's looking for my attention. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with that. That makes a lot of sense. What's your take on just the business perspective of this being the first time in the show's history that a reunion had been canceled? Need this alternate reunion? Like, what's your perspective on? Well, that? I didn't get to watch it last night because, as yeah. you know, I was coming back from South Africa. Of I was course. on the plane. Um, I lived it. I went yeah. there. Uh, I mean, NBC is going to shake things up with us. You know, there was some stuff that happened off camera they weren't happy about. And it just got too ugly at the moment. And I think it got so hot, it needs to cool down. Yeah, that makes sense. So there's a Frank Sinatra song. There uh, is. Do you know that oh, song? Yeah, of course. I had, I know you Frank would know. Sinatra song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the song, Too Hot, It Had yes. to Cool Down. So that's my description of it. Okay. Uh, I don't know the fate of the show, but you never know yeah. from year to year whether you're getting signed up again. Yeah. You know? I feel like, yeah, if I feel like you will get signed up. Like, don't you feel like when you think about what the future holds for you, this doesn't feel like it. It might be the end for some people. It doesn't feel like it would be the end of you on Real Housewives of New Jersey. I don't know, Jay, because every, every year I tell myself I'm fired. So if I have a job, I'm not... I'm excited. Yeah. I make the call to my friends, to my closest people every year and go, I'm out. I'm yeah. not coming back. <laughs> For eight years, I've said I'm out. Yeah. Since the year one, I'm not coming back. It was great. Thank you. I'll leave. Great. So, you know, I never took it for granted, but again... Mm-hmm. I always prepared myself for the day that you don't come back. Yeah. You've gone part-time and then full-time, right? And I was always full Always full-time. Well, so. no one starts right away as a housewife. Okay. Like okay. you kind of- You kind of got to work. Back then, it was like eight years ago, it was like still like, you don't show up as a friend of, like yeah. they just kind of said, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then you, they decide if they're going to keep you or not after that first year. But every year- is a new year. Do you feel like every year when you think about like what's next on the landscape of business, do you think like it made you back your head? Do you think you're going to get re-signed or do you think that you're just like, I I don't, you plan every year assuming you're not going to? I planned every year assuming I'm not. Amazing. I never lived beyond my means. Yeah. I always saved for a rainy day. Love that. And I just, just like worked hard every year to make as much as I can off film, as much as on. I did my appearances. I never took a day, day off. Yeah. Um, 
But again, like I don't think in a business sense, I think I'm a worker. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about before you're the voice of reason and you are Switzerland. Everyone talks about, and I think there's a lot of ways people can listen to this and bring that approach to their friend group and their workplace. So we're going to okay. talk about that before we do though, before the show approaches you, and this was back in 2016, right? What were you doing for work? Like what was your main source of income? What did the career look like? So things were hard. Mm-hmm. It was 2016. Uh, there was a crash, not, like before then, right? Yep. Things, yeah. What year was that? So 2008 like, to like seven 10, 11, eight. it like complete market crash and then slow rebound. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Frank had invested in a lot of things Yeah. and it didn't go well. Mm-hmm. And I had to, with no education, scramble to say, what am I going to do? So in my mind growing up, I always looked up as the people that made the most money had an education. Yeah. That's all I knew. So I tried to get a small technical degree as a surgical tech because okay. I liked watching house. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. You know, I had my real estate license, but real estate wasn't going anywhere, right? Yeah. I don't love real estate, but yeah. it, you make money. Sure. But I wasn't active. You know, I was raising my kids. Yeah. And then I scrambled around and got a small technical degree and okay. it almost killed me. Wait, why is that? Because I realized in that moment that I wasn't stupid growing up and put in all the slow classes. I was dyslexic. Only at 39 uh, did I realize that. Get out of here. So here I am. I'm bartending nights yeah. because I had to make money while the kids were sleeping. Yeah. I don't drink. I've never been drunk. So I had to figure out how to Wait, do it. Wait, you've like, never actually been drunk? No. Like ever in your life? No. That's I can't amazing. get drunk. It doesn't. Have you tried? Yeah. That's amazing. Doesn't everybody want to be drunk? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was it's in the not Hamptons fun. This weekend and I did <laughs> I'm it. saying. The next day sucked. <laughs> I, you feel like you were on a 14 hour flight. <laughs> sure, I, sure. Okay. <laughs> no, I just, uh, something chemically, like I could drink, like I started dating an Irishman. Yeah, okay. He thought it, he yeah. was going to get me drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I I drank him under the table. I like he was that. like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, what's going on here? But yeah, there's it. something I just don't get drunk. Okay. I don't like to drink either. Going back to dyslexia, how did you find out at the age of 39 that you were dyslexic? Like what was, what happened? I, um, I had to read the same sentence yeah. in the book I was given maybe three or four times. So- okay. Then I realized like when I tried to write things down, they were backwards. Like I would write numbers backwards or like when I was trying to study. Yeah. I hadn't been to like school since 1988. Right. And I felt stupid. So I never thought of going back to school because I was always chastised for spelling, for math. I could not, till this day, I can't do math. Interesting. Isn't that fascinating that there are things that we just didn't know about then and the confidence, the mental aspect oh, of like where we're placed could change the whole trajectory of what we're I doing. Felt, we I do was it? in, you know, first coming on the housewives, I wouldn't public speak. I was offered some awards for like saving some dogs and getting involved and sure. using my platform. Sure. I turned them down. I actually ran off the stage one day. Wait, Not why? Public. Public speak, I couldn't. I felt stupid. Do you get nervous or it was because you felt stupid? I felt stupid. But you're like, I'm looking at you and talking to you and you're such a great speaker. I felt stupid. Interesting. I couldn't speak in front of people. How did you get over that? Speaking in front of, like, Just um, I, I had asked people if they wanted me to get up and speak, would they make it like a conversation? Okay. So that's when I started to Okay. Do I said, don't. You know, but yeah. if you know what you're talking about, yeah, I just felt like I didn't know what I was talking about about anything. Interesting. So, yeah. Okay. Well, you've come through a lot. You've learned a lot. I also read that you worked in the prison system. I did. Tell me about that career path. So I grew up in Patterson. If everybody, anybody knows yeah, about Patterson, it's an amazing place. Yeah. I wouldn't trade growing up there for anything, but yeah. it wasn't an easy place to grow up, you know? Right. Uh, And my dad was a cop there. My dad was a Marine. He was a cop. And I always looked up to him. He became the chief of police. Okay. And he was very much respected everywhere he went. Um, So I always wanted to be what he was. Yeah. And I knew you didn't have to go to school to be a cop back then. You didn't have to go to college. You had to pass a civil service test. Right. Which it's like a common sense more test. Like you can't read into the question. I watched my dad take many tests to get to where he was. Do you need a two year degree to be a cop or? Now you do. Now you do, but back then, then. okay, got it. Interesting. So So you were going to pursue being a police officer. I was pursuing, that's all I knew. That's all I ever wanted. So I worked in the prison system because that civil service test only comes around every four years. Okay, got it. And I was too young, I had missed the cutoff. So I worked per diem in the jail until I was able to be a patrolman. 
Interesting. I went to, I always wanted, I was like fascinated with true crime. So I went to a police academy in high school. Oh, cool. And we had to get sprayed with mace at the I end. I did that. Did yeah. you get sprayed with yeah, mace? Of course. That's barbaric. It sucks. Yeah. You're now like, you get yeah, used you're to like, it too, by the way. It. Yeah, exactly. My brother was a cop. He'd come home with mace. Like you okay. just get yeah. used to that. Like, yeah, you got mace on your clothes, mace yeah. on your hands, you know. So all different career paths for you. And then. A couple. Yeah. I but, mean, there's nothing I wouldn't do. If I had to work, I worked. Gotcha. Nothing was beneath me if I had to work. If Real Housewives, Housewives of New Jersey didn't come your way, what do you think the career would look like for you? Um, I don't know. Hmm. I just don't know. Okay. All because, right. Because, you know, the, being a surgical assistant, which is what I actually be, it wouldn't have, it, it was hard. I had to work a couple jobs there, yeah. like surgical, then I would do medical billing after that. And, you know, it was just... Maybe I would still be doing that, but I don't think so. Okay, but here we are, 2024, still in the game, just finished the last season. When you started in 2016, how do you know how much you should be compensated? Like, how do you even know where to start when they approach you to be on a show like this? You do you don't. talk to the castmates? Do you just kind of no, just take like, what you're given? What does that look like? I didn't have a lawyer. Well, my ex-husband was a lawyer, so he yeah. looked at the contract. Yeah. You don't start off with a lot of money. Yeah, okay. Very little. And, with like, um, like less than 50,000 per season? About, okay. No, about that. You about start that. off around there. Okay. Um, and then you get raises after that. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I just was happy to have a job and I was happy to make that money and I yeah. was happy to show up. And then I wasn't going to compromise, though, who I was for that money, no matter how much it was or how much I needed it. And there were very big decisions in that first year to say, because I wasn't in a good place financially, to say, well, you know, maybe you, you would be better if you did this or said this to your friend. And I said, no, that's not me. Interesting. That's not me. Yeah. Knowing that I was going back to making four jobs, mm -hmm. working four jobs to make that one salary. Yeah, especially in reality TV, because usually, especially if you want to get renewed, right, if you stir drama up, you are creating more value, which you then- You don't get paid more for more value. You don't get paid more for more value. No. Okay. I mean- For get, stirring up drama. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, you're not getting paid by how you performed that season. Yeah. But do you ever think in your head, like on reality TV, oh, then you if I you're, perform more, I'll be around I have a secured more. spot. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. you never let that get to you. You never always said day. like, I'm still going to remain myself through and through, thick and thick. Yeah. I didn't know any other way. I mean, yeah. it's the way you're raised, right? Yeah, so, exactly. You know, there were times I felt guilty. Like yeah. I say, I could be like stern so much. I could do this. Yeah. But, you know, my kids could have more if I do that. But there was a guilty part of me saying, I'm still not going to do that. And I'll just make sure they're okay. Yeah. I think there's something extremely intuitive, intelligent, and brilliant about the way you were able to maintain your character and also maintain your friendships when everyone was Thank split. You. And I think a lot of people deal with this in their workplace. I think they deal with it uh, at home. I think they deal with it like families and relationships. And it's really, really hard to do. So for anyone back home that feels like they're in the middle of drama or in the workplace, they're in the middle of people pulling left and right, what are some like pieces of advice you would give them when they are that soundboard for their group? Because you've been doing it now for eight seasons. You can't succumb to the pressure of taking a side when you don't want to. If you're friends with two people yeah. and they're fighting, yeah. you don't have to support that fight. You just have to be a supportive friend. Yeah. You don't support the beef. You support the friend. And you have to be able to separate that. And not everyone's going to be happy with you all the time. Yeah. You're not going to be the one that they trust, even though you could be trusted more than anybody else in the room. Right. They're not going to be happy with you. You're not going to be like the most loved person in that moment. But, you know, you're also just being who you are. So yeah. it doesn't make you less of a friend. Because if any one of those girls who are upset with me if I didn't take a side called me at 2 o'clock in the morning to give them whatever I had, I'd do it. Or if their family needed me, I'd do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to stab them in the back. Even if they told me something and they stabbed me in the back, I'm not going to use that against them, what they told me. I'll just never talk to them again. So do you put, is it, 
I feel like there's so many manipulating in the worlds of business or the worlds of even just personal life and especially financial life. Do you think you just have like a, a massive instinct when someone's trying to manipulate you and then you just put up boundaries yep. immediately? So is that kind of your tactic yeah. then? Because I feel like everyone's kind of pulling at you in the show to get you to take their side because they feel like if they can get Dolores' side, they've won. Here's you feel that? I do. And, and I've been pressured even sometimes not even by them yeah. by people in their group like people outside of the show yeah yeah constantly um, angling yeah and you know i have to say that people expect you to make a re have a reaction to things yeah people have wanted to be me to be mad when i didn't want to be yeah and no matter what they told me to get that swip that flitch that switch to flip yeah i wouldn't do it yeah because i'm like I'm not mad about it, and I'm not gonna fucking be mad about it. Yeah. But you don't. Do you really want me to fucking pick a side? You don't want me to fucking pick a side. When you say it like that, I'm like, I don't want you to pick a side. <laughs> I don't want you to pick. Don't a side. make me fucking pick a side. Yeah. Happy, be fucking happy. I'm Switzerland right. right now. Everybody. Yeah. So that's just how I feel about it. And I could, I get texts. Everybody's yeah. pissed off at me. I think they get pissed off at me. <laughs> but. They'll get over it because I never hurt them. Yeah, 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 for sure. I think what I was on TikTok today scrolling, just preparing for this interview. Oh, okay. And everyone's talking about you putting Teresa in her place with Louis' comments. People are like, wow, Dolores spoke up and she spoke up in a stern way. And it was like, and people were just like completely, um, I think you just like, when you spoke in that type of manner, you grabbed the world's attention for those that watch the show. And I'm, and I'm wondering what your thoughts are when you watched it back, but you haven't even watched I don't it back. Wanna, I don't want to watch it back because I knew when I did, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. this is going to be a thing. But, you know, you have to, when you're a real friend, mm -hmm. you also, and I, you know, it was kind of a visceral reaction, but again, it's for two reasons. Yeah. Number one, he's going to get flack for that. Yeah. And number two, it shouldn't have been said, right? Yep. But, it, but you know, he's going to get something he's going to get hit for that. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm, for sure. like, you know, when, and I'm not saying I'm his parent or when a, when a kid falls and your parents yell at you and say, I told you not to fall. And then you're mad. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Of course. What are you doing? Yeah. So that kind of thing. Like I was, when I get mad, mm -hmm. when I get hurt, I get mad. Yeah, for sure. So I was, you know, yeah. I was upset for what was said. I was upset for, you know, saying, listen, we don't have to have a reaction to everything. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like, bite your time. Mm -hmm. You don't always have... Sometimes people think that, oh, I don't want to be made a fool out of. I need to make a point of this. Yeah. You don't always have to make a point of something. Correct. I also think you can't grow, like whether it's business, financial, or personal situations, you can't grow unless there's healthy conflict. And I think healthy conflict is good. And I think, I don't know if you feel this being in the show, but in general, I feel like a lot of people for security will surround themselves by echo chambers, right? They'll only surround themselves by people that will tell them they're right because they feel good about it. But you can't grow without that conflict. Well, no. That's and I feel like you're thing. not, you're the opposite of an echo chamber. Like you tell it how it is, when it is, and you try and like, like kind of be tactful with that. And I think that's refreshing to see. And I think more people need to find mentors in business and in life and in their personal lives like you who will always shoot it straight and keep it real, right? Yeah, and my kids get that from me too. I'm not just like that with my, and I want constructive criticism. Yeah. I get it all the time. Yeah. I'm like, all right, all right, I get it, I hear you, I get it. And, and you know, just say it to me. Just say it to my face though. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't say it behind yeah, my back. Yeah, not behind the back bullshit. And, you know, another thing my father always said is, I didn't teach you to be a friend when it's easy to be a friend. Oh, I love that quote. There's so much I in this show. Quote. I'll never complain about my job. I love my job so much. Yeah. But there's a lot of my family and where I came from, they didn't show. Ever. Interesting. Like, I got the key to the city of Patterson. Yeah, I A lot of that. my feelings. They... They filmed it. My dad like was walking down the street and and cop cars were stopping and like fire trucks were stopping and running off and shaking my father's hand. And here I am walking in to get the key to the city and they never showed it. Why do you think they don't show it? I don't know. Like I wonder what the business thought process behind because it. Because there was other stuff going on that they wanted to show, yeah. but they cut so much of my family out and yeah. my background. They only started showing my work with the shelter 
after I was on for like five years and I was there like three days. Every time they called me for something production, I'd be at the shelter. Yeah. And they're like, one per one person came and said, well, we should probably film that. And then it was like, people got to know me. See, I think that's a missed opportunity because I was reading some articles this morning on like this season. And one person said, this season feels like it's toxicity with no teeth and the viewers have been left in the wind. And I think about the depth of what they could have shown with what you just shared and how they're, that's not toxicity. That's, that's giving back. That's, that's beauty. It's motivational. And it feels like some of those things, I don't know, they, they should have incorporated more of those. When you think about last year at this time, so suppose we were here a year ago and I was like, all right, Dolores, do you think there will be another season? What do you, what would you have said a year ago? I told everyone a year ago, pull in your horns. Yeah. Chill out. Yeah all separately, on camera, off camera, just sit back, stop. Whatever is going on yeah. that's going to get the network to a breaking point with us, just stop. We have a really good group. Yeah, We're number one show a lot of times. Yeah, We're the most relatable, but we can't do it if we're just ripping each, each other, other apart. Yeah. It's got to please stop. Just ignore them. Yeah, Don't, you know, I saw it coming. Yeah. Give me the crystal ball. You got the crystal ball. You're planning your next year. Give me a percentage. What is the percentage of likeliness? Like 10%, 20%, 100%, 99%. You think that there will be another season going in 2025? I can't even say. You don't even know. Where they don't know. Yeah. How course. about this? Yeah. They don't even know. They okay. said, well, you know, talk to you next year. And we'll talk they, to you next year. It didn't work out. Yeah. It didn't work out good for New York. They didn't get called. Right. Right. Like, right. Yeah. But, you know, Maybe from some divine intervention. Yeah. Something good will happen. It, it takes my breath away because I've worked really hard. We all have. We've shared so much. And one thing about us all is we're very family orientated. We there's some things that we all have in common. Why couldn't we just pull it together? Yeah. When I tell you, begged. Yeah. Bag them all. Interesting. You were the quarterback. They should have listened to the quarterback there. They couldn't. But, but we'll see. What, why could, why when you say they couldn't, why not? Everybody had to have the last word. Yeah. You know who is has that, the is last that, word? Isn't that always how it is though? Yeah. But let somebody destroy themselves. That's yeah. what I say. Like if somebody's like, if I, sometimes if you ignore things, they go away. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Let it pass. I like that. All right. So suppose the show, let's just say it doesn't come back, right? You got the eco electric company. So you're offering yeah. plumbing and electrician service. What are some other things that are on your mind as it relates to like your career and business if it doesn't come so back? So beauty. Okay. Like um, a lot of women my age go through a lot of different changes. Okay. And there's just not enough about it. There's not enough talk about it. There's not enough beauty products about it. So I've been working with New Beauty Magazine, and um, I'm I'm a sucker for a good like face cream. I yeah. spent I used to spend a lot of money on creams, but there's this Beauty Pass now that I partnered up with them. Cool. And it's um, what's the hold on? What's the three five three uh, five two? Uh, I get confused. Five, two, My seven, dyslexia. Seven, two, <laughs> okay. So what you would do is with this beauty pass, and there's like a wait list to get on it, but they gave it to my followers. So okay. beauty pass is you text 52705. Okay. Scroll down to the message bar, put in Dolores. And every week it's called like free gift Friday. Cool. You'll get like a message saying, this is the cream we're sponsoring this week. It could be like a $130 cream for like $15. Gotcha. And they'll send it to you for nothing. Oh, wow. There's no trick to it. There's nothing. Okay. You fill out a little questionnaire. And if you want to even take it, you do or you don't. Okay. Every week I get a new beauty product. So I started thinking like there's not enough products for women my age. Mm -hmm. And when I'm, you know, hot flashes and all stuff you want to know about. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm thinking of getting into the beauty business to some extent. Okay. So well, text Dolores to 52705. Free shipping and handling on some of this stuff? So you get, all you have to do is pay shipping and pay handling. Pay shipping and handling. And well, it's it's going to cost like $15 for yeah. like, they feature a new beauty product every week. Yeah. And it could be anywhere from like $80 to $150. Just like the top picks of like what's out in the new beauty magazine. It's amazing. Okay. So you might dabble into the beauty space. Everyone I'm, I'm really, that that's out. on my mind right now. Okay. That's top of mind. But we also know you'll be on reality TV. 
right? So we have, oh. we know you're gonna be on, we know you're gonna be in more. We're gonna see you on Traders. Everyone's asking. I mean, Traders is like the new hottest show out there right now. I know. I mean, you met Alan Cummings. Like, just what would you think about that? Alan Cummings is the most amazing person. It was the um, experience of a lifetime yeah. for me to be there. And it's so funny because we all know who's on. Yeah, that's already that, been released. It's right? already been right released. Prichelle, so I can tell Wells, you. We got Wells. We got Michelle Wells, yeah. Gabby, Dorinda Medley, yep. Bob Harper. Um, Britney Spears' Chanel. ex is on yeah, there. Sam. Sam's on Bob there. Harper. Oh, um, from the royal family, um, Ivor McBatten. Okay. Do you know? Who, I don't know who that is. Ivor McBatten. The, the, the show The Crown. Okay. His oh, yeah, 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 like yeah. The first yeah. four episodes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's McBatten. Windsor McBatten is the name of the castle. So yeah. he's a royal. Yep. Imagine a royal on with a housewife. Don't even ask. <laughs> no, like so much shit. Oh, my God. Did um, being on the show of Real Housewives... I mean, you're navigating a lot of waters with cameras around 24-7. Was navigating the waters of Real Housewives harder or easier than Traders? Right now, anything is easier than Housewives. Yeah, Let right? me, But it was a, it made you think. Okay. So Traders is like, it breaks you down because you don't know who's kind of like the Housewives, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but the missions were unbelievable. And yeah, it's just... So amazing. And this season is going to be off the hook. Okay. What, what was We had say. some gamers. Gamers are a different breed. Oh, yeah. Oh, like actual gamers. No, like Survivor, Big oh, Brother. Oh, because they're, they're built for that. That's all they do. Yeah, they'll backstab you. They'll do Whoa, everything. Oh, I yeah. didn't know from nothing. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I'm not. Like, this was a whole new realm for me. Okay. I didn't know that these gamers were like this. Talk to me about this because I know Oh, you Bob can... the Drag Queen? Oh, there's another good one. All right. I'll talk to you about this. I know you can't say much about what this sh what happened on the show. Of course. We'll have to have you back. But tell me about your biggest takeaway. Like, you're with all these different people with different backgrounds going through this crazy game that is like the hottest game on TV now. You're done filming. Don't spoil anything. We don't want anybody to get in trouble. But like, what was your biggest takeaway having that experience? What did you learn most about that experience? I'm not as street smart as I thought I was. Interesting. Yeah. That's. I feel like that says a lot coming from you. And then you also had some powerhouses like Gabby and Chriselle there. Gabby and Chriselle are people. my love. Like, I, I want to be their mom. Yeah. Like, I told them. Like, I want to. They are so. They inspired me so much. The younger generation. Yeah. These women are so strong and so confident. I know yeah. they've been through a lot, but they're so smart. And I looked, I loved hearing them speak. I love how, like, they stuck together as women. Yeah. And um, that really, I learned a lot from that. All and right. I love that younger generation. I want all the younger women to stick together and not tear each other down. And, you know, <laughs> they had me going. I Hell okay. yeah. You learned from them. But I did. I learned learn from them and I was so proud of them. Yeah. But they can also learn a lot from you. And I think about you've been through a lot. You've seen a lot oh, and sure. you've been through a divorce. And so on this show, we talk right a lot about finance and business and life navigation. Knowing what you know now about the whole process of going through divorce and protecting yourself through it and just all the moving parts. Do you have any advice for people that are either thinking about getting married or they're getting married or anyone that's even going through a divorce as it relates to like just the business, the finance, the stress of it all? I will tell anybody, you both have to be in charge of your money. If you're both working mm -hmm. together to put money into that pot, and even if you're not, if even if you're a stay-at-home mom or you're a stay-at-home dad, you're also putting your lifetime, your sweat equity into it. Yeah. So you should absolutely have equal say in where that money's going and always know where that money's going. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, the transparency. you got to be able to see it. you got to be able to see it. And educate. Yeah. Don't think somebody else is smarter than you. A lot of times I always thought, like, Frank was a lawyer. Like, he's smarter than me. Mm-hmm. Let him handle everything. There were decisions he made that I wouldn't have made. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, um, I'm just telling you, just just you need to both be on the same page with your finances. Nobody is more important than the other person in a relationship when it comes to finances. Was there ever a, a big learning lesson you had in finances where, like, you weren't on the same page or where there wasn't transparency and you found out about something that you're like – this will always be a learning lesson to me that I'll pass on to others. Just coming into my 
uh, getting married as a young, meaning Frank as a young girl yeah. who had never been on a vacation, who never left her neighborhood, yeah. who never went to school, waitress, you know. Yeah. Um, just, just like I said, just educate yourself in your finances. Yeah. I don't care what you do for a living. I think that's so important, especially. That is so important. Well, you've done so much like in philanthropy, philanthropy and entrepreneurship, and you had even alluded earlier that you didn't, you weren't even, you're not good with numbers, you said. And it's not like you went, you have a business degree, but you're still doing it all. And I think that's motivation for so many people. Like, you don't need the degree. You don't have to be the best with you numbers. Don't. You could still do it, right? You could still do it. You're not dumb because you don't have a degree. Right. Look, my boyfriend came here uh, in his 20s mm -hmm. with maybe $50 in his pocket, if that was a lot. Yeah. And, and he has made, it's the American dream. Like, he didn't go to high school. Did he, Monica? You're his sister-in-law. Did he? Yeah. He didn't go to high school. Yeah. And he is the one of the biggest contractors in the city. Eco Electric is a huge, he says two rolls, he says three rolls Royces right now. Like he just got Damn. the new one. Yeah. Like Paul Connell is the American dream. That is and awesome. he probably got thrown out of high school. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Wow. Now look at him. One of the biggest guys out here just absolutely killing it. When you think about like your career back to the Real Housewives of New Jersey days from 2016 to now, every one of those years, would you say, was it the show that was like majority of your income or were there some side hustle projects you were doing along the way I, that mm -hmm. outpaced that income? Instagram. Influencer. Instagram. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at the time, I mean, at 2016, this influencer stuff, you would know better than me, yeah. just started coming around. Yeah. It was During early COVID, then, yeah. I made a lot of money on Instagram. Yeah. I what, made a lot. Like from big brand deals? Was that brand the best deals, way to yeah. make it? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and what, do you have a specific niche that you're getting? Was it mostly beauty? Was it mostly it certain was, types of brands? It was mostly beauty. There was, And there was stuff I turned down because yeah. I always wanted to keep yeah. my reputation like – I don't know. Some company sent me some cellulite machine that probably broke apart when I opened it when they yeah. sent it to me. And it was yeah. a lot of money. I sent it back. Yeah. I can't ask people that follow me to trust me. Yeah. And do that. Like I can't do it. Yeah, you can't you can't. You the, gotta promote the people stuff. People that for follow me work hard for their money. Yeah, for sure. They work really hard for their money. I I I pay very much attention. I might not fight with people on Instagram, but mm -hmm. I'm looking at who needs help with their dog? I'm looking at who follows me. I call them my friends. I don't have fans. I have friends. Yeah. So I couldn't I couldn't do that. I'm not lying. I'm not doing that. Do you guys so the other real housewives, you guys all have Instagram followings at this point. You're all doing influencing and you're all new to it. Are you guys having conversations? Like, did you do this brand deal? How much did you get paid? Yeah, on we do. You're collaborating. Yeah, do. Yeah, what does yeah. that collaboration look like? Like, how do those business conversations happen? Well, you know, some people will tell you what they made. They'll yeah. tell you around what they made. Yeah. I'll be like, you know, is this is this the right number for this? And yeah. they're like, mm, I made more than that. Or, yeah, I take it. That sounds good, you know. And then, of course, there's the appearances. Yeah, and that's a good, that's a huge portion of income, Yeah, too. I have my game coming up this week, if you want to come. Um, tell me about the on, game. It's uh, Battle for Brooklyn. It's Maimonides okay. uh, Hospital. Okay. And it's mostly a charity-driven hospital, so it's the – Housewives play against the doctors. Okay, cool. And uh, the money goes to the cancer center, like the breast cancer center, and they never turn anybody away. So Maimonides have been open about, I think, 120 years, seven days a week, and never turned one person away. So they're wow. driven by charity. Like, they need all the money they can get. Okay, so this is coming on Monday. So tell us no, where- No, Wednesday. I, okay, so Wednesday when at Maimonides Field. Okay. At um, six o'clock. Okay. Battleforbrooklyn.org. You can get your tickets or you can show up and buy tickets. But like they're that. selling out. Like we're up to about over 4,000 people. Let's go. Real Housewives are bringing it in. You guys got to go check that out. Last question I got about negotiation. Do you talk to the other Real Housewives, the closest ones, about what they're getting paid on the season? Like before you negotiate, do you guys call each other and say, hey, how much are you getting paid? Should we negotiate? Or do you guys not talk about we it? We don't talk about that. Okay. You just kind of put the walls up and you're like, we put no. the walls up. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Listen, I, I was very happy. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be the highest paid. Okay. I yeah. need to just be fair because, you know, when they trim the fat, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not at the I top know my word, And I'm happy and I and I appreciated my job every single 
day. I love it. We know you're going to be on Traders. So many years on Real Housewives of New Jersey. Do you think TV is in your future in other capacities? Do you want to get into hosting? Any other endeavors like that? I mean, I would love that. Sure. Yeah. Like I always say, like I I just joined the. Um, SAG. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just joined. So maybe an actress? I, I don't know. Like, I could okay. play a mob wife now. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah, you could. Like, I could just, yeah. like, I don't take acting lessons, but I know yeah. that lifestyle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I grew up in New Jersey. Like, yeah. you just know. And I feel like you could play nice at dinner, and then someone crosses you, you'll get up and you'll, like, slap the wine, flip the table, and be like, don't fuck with me. That yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. 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 All right, I think you need to audition for something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. But I mean, like, listen, I've been working since I'm 14. I'm going to yeah. take a couple months off and yeah. get my head together mm -hmm. and see whatever happens. When you think about the finances from 14, do you have one memory either for good or bad as it relates to money, either like when you got a certain check and how big it was, or you lost a certain amount of money or there's so one money memory? So I can tell you one, one night things were rough. You want a bad one or a good one? I have good ones. Why don't you take a bad and a good one? Okay. So I'll give you a bad one. Okay. One night things were really rough and I was bartending at a like not a great bar because I wasn't a good bartender. Yeah. So um, I didn't make a lot of money that night. I ran out of gas on the way home. Okay. I was too proud to call anybody to pick me up. So I walked home at like two o'clock in the morning Jeez. in the winter. I want to say that was 2011. How long was that walk? Uh, I it was I, I thought I could make it. So it was like long enough in the in the winter, but it was about uh, like a few, not a few blocks, but I don't know, like distance. But yeah. Long enough, felt long in the dark, I could tell you that. Interesting. And uh, it was funny because my son had left me a note on the pillow saying, Mom, you'll never have to work like this again that day. Oh, jeez. Okay. He's in finance now. He's yeah. doing great. Yeah, yeah, he's doing great. And then you have a daughter who's she's a She's a vet. veterinarian. She's a doctor. Yeah. So it was kind of good that they saw those. They had everything. Yeah. And then they had nothing. So that that was number one. And then just... um. I was really proud when I started making money and I could just fly to see my kids and leave the money at school. And, yeah. You know, because they've always worked so hard. So. What about, you said you, you grew up in a, was it lower class? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. My dad was a cop. What they make in, in okay. the 70s, 14,000 okay. a year. Yeah, my yeah, mom yeah. was a waitress. So I remember being sick one day and I said, oh, I don't feel like working. I was like a senior in high school. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I was a senior. And she goes, it's not fair to the other waitresses. I'll carry your trays, but you got to come to work. Yeah. But you, so you grew up in a situation like that where your mom's, you know, serving tables and your dad's a cop, but you're now surrounded by so much wealth that it's like almost like, what the fuck? What is your relationship with money? Like, do you look at this? Like, do you think some people in your circle just take it for granted given what you've seen from being a child to now? Like, what's your relationship? Well, with none money? of us grew up with money. I'm yeah, that's true. Not one of us. Yeah. Um, so I think that it's exciting to have, grow up and then have money and be able to spend it. Yeah. But it wasn't, I don't forget, it wasn't too long ago that things didn't go well for me from some bad business decisions. Mm -hmm. Not on my part. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that's a very fresh memory. And I always, you know what I like? I like being able to spend money, like pick up the bill. Like I'm a guy. Yeah. I'm like a guy. I hate okay. to tell you. Like I, I, I'm a guy. I'm like, no, no, I got it. I got yeah, it. Like yeah. my friends, I'm always paying. But um. As long as I have the money to do that, okay. I don't need the nicest car. Yeah, I mm -hmm. drive a really nice car. You know, I have a yeah. whatever. What but, are you driving? I'm uh, just curious. Mercedes GL, like the, the Jeep. Oh, yeah. Those are sick. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. We got to get you a mic, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable. Um, you know, because yeah. there's a certain things you have to look at, right? Yeah, but it's yeah, not yeah. important for me to have, I've had it, I've lost it, yeah. I made it again, but I'm getting old, I don't want to work that hard again. Okay, you know? I got you. This is a hot topic I feel like right now, uh, dating and the whole like money situation. People are talking about it everywhere on social media. When you start dating, like do you have a take for for the women that are out there? Do you are there questions they should be asking about money? Do you think people should talk about money when they're dating? Like who should pick up the bill? The do you guy have, should pick up the bill now. Every what, time, all time. Give me percent. your take on it. Let's go. What's your take on it? He should pick up the bill. And I don't okay. care what he does for a living. If he's yeah, a yeah. worker, you want somebody. I will go through the mud for you, but I have yeah. to know that I have that security. Okay. I like that. I'm not a gold digger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just the way I think of as a man. Yeah. Like that to me as a man, because you may fall on hard times. And I'll pick up that tab when yeah, you yeah, fall on yeah. hard times, but you better be able to. Don't fall on hard times because you don't wake up to go to work in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're sleeping in the day, it's better be because you 
we're up all night working. Working, I got it. Okay. I like that. Do you have a take on, it's a very hot topic now, that people are like very opinionated on it, prenups. You for prenups, against prenups. What's your take on prenups? I don't have a problem with prenups. Okay. I don't. Um, but there should be like a contingency in there that you are taken care of. Got it. Yeah. Like you you can't get, give your youth to a man as a woman mm -hmm. and not get compensated for that if he decides to go get somebody fucking trade you in for somebody younger. Yeah. You yeah, better yeah. know that you're going to be okay. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not totally against prenups, mm -hmm. but is there a fair aspect to it? There yeah. should be. Yeah. Of all the things that you've seen just with earnings and success you've had, what's like the biggest money lesson you've learned? Like the like, Don't trust somebody with your money. And did so did you get burned by that? I uh no. Okay. But, but you've just seen enough shit. I've seen enough shit. Yeah. You don't trust your accountant, don't trust your finance person. You know every dime that comes in and goes and have the control over it. You can have somebody tell you what to do with it, but you have to have control of that money. Yeah. Don't lose control of your money. Yeah. Because don't give that up. Okay. I like this this finance. Am I right up to say that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think I totally agree with you. I mean, I think the, the biggest thing I think personally with money is you got to have visibility to it. You got to see Every where day. it's going. Every single Every day. Every single day. And then you can't make decisions to improve your finances, improve your career track, do anything unless you have visibility to it. And we know that like in relationships, just about 50% of them cheat through money. They lie, steal, and cheat through money. So not having visibility to that puts you in a position where you're going to get cheated on, manipulated, or stolen with your money. So you just have to see it. You have to talk about it. You have to know it. That's know my take risks. on it. Know your risks. Really know your risks. Really know your risk. A hundred percent. What do you think? This is a fun finance question. What is one thing you think you overspend on, but like you know you overspend clothes. on it, and you're like, I don't care. Oh, clothes. Clothes. Yeah. What, what is there like a certain design or certain store? No, I. I mean, I. I. Um, if I'm going, I just. I just spent a lot of money on clothes and it's stupid. What's like your go-to pick though? Everyone's oh, like, going to want to know. Dolores like, is go-to. Yeah, no, like it's not one specific brand like Fartech I'm on or, no. you know, things like my, like just like that. Like, okay, I was just on uh, Watch What Happens Live. I spent two grand on my dress, two on my shoes, a thousand on my shoes, then hair and makeup, you know, you, you want the best of, you know, things like that. Yeah. So, Watch what, I feel like you won't be able to wear it again. Yeah, you're not wearing it again. Why? What would happen if you did? You're gonna get chirped. Yeah, people are gonna give you shit about it. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't care if so, I don't care. I don't make my decisions, but I've already yeah. been seen in a picture with that. Yeah, so I can't. I mean, I'll wear it, but I don't know where will I wear it to. I got a question. It's Alexander wa McQueen. Wa watch what? Oh, it's a sick, sick brand. Yeah, watch right. what happens live. I was the bartender once. You were? Yeah, and it Who was, was on with you. I had so much fun. Who? Uh, Brittany, Brittany, Brittany Cartwright, and then. The girl from uh, Bridgerton. Bridgerton. Oh, she was okay. like the main actress from Bridgerton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I, now, what was most interesting to me? One, the studio is very small. Super small. Two, Andy Cohen's great at what he does. He's so amazing. Three, the speed at which they are searching for tea on that show is like I've never seen. It's like <laughs> 40 questions of give me tea, give me tea, give me tea, give me tea, give me tea. Uh, and you know what? And thank you because <laughs> – Last week, I yeah. got in a little, you know, they were like, oh, who do you want to come back? I said, oh, Teresa. And we were talking about Jen Fessler. And I'm like, oh, Jen Fessler. But I'm friends with everybody on the show. So I think everyone should come back. Yeah. Oh, it didn't go over. Why that. did that not go over well? Because I didn't say, like, people who I'm closer with. Oh. Or, and then people thought that I didn't want them to come back. Let me just tell you. I don't even know if I even want you to replay this because then they relive it, they hear it. And, but I mean, yes, the speed of – here's the thing with Watch What Happens Live. You're so smart. Yeah. Because you have to answer those questions, those crucial questions Yeah. on a dime. Yeah. And you better answer them right. Yeah, because the tough thing is if you answer them wrong, you're actually – doing yourself a favor because you're giving them good TV. If you answer them right, you're playing too careful and they won't have you back. So like, like Tyler Cameron, for example, he's been on the show. He's from the Bachelor franchise. He's been on that. And he's like, you kind of have to step into it and give them the good shit. Cause if you don't give them the good shit, they're not going to have you back. Yeah. Well, they'll have us back because our you're episode always, airs yeah. and then yeah. whoever that episode's about, yeah. you're going on. Yeah. Exactly. So that's kind of, okay. but now what? Yeah. We're not on anymore yeah, yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. So, so yeah. Then but, what? but but as far as somebody who's not on a Bravo show like yeah. yourself, right? Yeah. 
Um, yeah. That's it. What is the hardest business thing about being a Real Housewife in New Jersey? Is, is, is it the press? Is it the live shows? Is it the full filming the season? Like, what's the most challenging thing about it? Well, um, you have to be transparent no matter what. Like, yeah. having a relationship on the show isn't always easy. It's hard on relationships. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard on friendships. The relationship, like, you know, or saying something, you can't take back what you said. Yeah. Once the toothpaste is out of the tube, you mm. can't put it back in. Yeah. And and sometimes it may not hit, but when it does, I mean, sometimes it's easier to predict the weather than it is to when people are going to get, like, take something and run with it. Yeah. Like, there were times where I said something, I'm like, oh, shit, people are going to go after me. And they didn't. And then there was another time I said something that was like nothing, and I got a little bit of shit about it. Yeah. So you just never know the climate of which is going to hit. But you can never, like, they're like, no, we're not taking it out. Like, you could call yeah. them and say, please, please. <laughs> and they're not doing it. Yeah. I like what you said, once the toothpaste is out of the tube, it's there's no bad. putting it back no. in. Is there, when you look back at your career journey with Real Housewives of New Jersey, is, is there one, what are you most proud of when you think about all the things that you've accomplished business-wise or just your brand on the show? Because you are a living, breathing brand every day. Like, what are you most proud of in this journey? Um... The philanthropy part of it, yeah. like that I was at, like this game coming up. Yeah. Like I remember standing on that field, Tiki Barber threw like That's cool. um, like a ball to like little Frankie mm -hmm. who used to wait online to, to have his shirt signed by him. And and I looked up at the, at the stands and everybody was so happy. And I looked over at the doctors and they were having a great time. They deserve to be recognized for that. And I thought like, wow, yeah. this was, this is, it. Like this is the best. Yeah, when you can use a show like and use it for that type of impact, what a beautiful thing. Your whole journey, biggest regret. That's your biggest thing you're most proud of. What do you think your biggest regret is from 2016, 2024? Bravo, Real Housewives, New Jersey. You think about it. What's one thing you regret? I don't have one. I love that answer. Just live it, do it, breathe it, forget own about it. it. Own, own it, it and, and, and own it. I don't have a regret. I love it. All right. What can we expect business-wise? Well, tell us a little bit more. What do you think is coming? What are some things well, to look forward to? Tease us a little bit um, on what's coming up with Dolores. Stay tuned. I have a little – I have a beauty product in mind. And it's okay. not like I just put my name on something. This is something I'm going to put a lot of work into. Okay. And it's going to be for, like, women my age, yeah. Okay, and that will if when and if this comes out, it, you could find it where on your just go to your Instagram page. Um, I'll probably I'll probably do like something with New Beauty magazine. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really know. You know, um, it's just a thought right now. Like I said, I'm not a business person, but yeah. who knows what I'll become. You're not a business person, but you are a business. Your brand I'm a is a brand business. And I'm You're a business, making it off so. Instagram. You're killing it. Extremely likable. The last thing I want to talk about is that you recently spoke about taking Ozempic and just a little bit about owning, like own your path. Like stop, like stop worrying about what everyone thinks. You can like, never face a decision in your life worried about what somebody else is going to think of it. Because at the end of the day, you have to live with yourself. Exactly. I love it. I mean, I think people, especially with this podcast, business, finance, and career, they live their lives with everyone else's expectations. No, they don't, don't take ever. shots. They, don't they ever. get stuck down the path. Don't and ever. I think that's a good piece of advice. No, me. no, no. Don't. What people are going to work? What is this one going to say? Are they paying your bills? Are they going to be there if you fall on your face? Are they going to come pick you up? No, they're yeah. not. Take you got to live with that. So don't do it based on what somebody else is thinking. I, when I got divorced, I stayed very close with my ex-husband and I raised my kids as a family and everybody had a lot to say about it. I was yeah. very young <clears throat> and, um, I didn't listen to them. They were like, oh, your kids don't know what, uh, they don't have a schedule or you're sending mixed messages. But in my gut, I felt I was doing the right thing. So at the end of the day, it turns out I did do the right thing. <clears throat> but a lot of people said, oh, you have no pride. You're nice to your ex. You have no pride. It wasn't. No, they were so wrong, and but I didn't really care what they had to say. But we're like we're all taught that in kindergarten, like sticks and souls will break your, you know, Bones, doors, like, right? Never hurt we're up, but no one actually executes on it, right? Like I feel like everyone says it, but no one does it. So for someone that's listening to this, it's like I'm influenced by it. When my friends tell me not to talk to them, I do it, even though I want it. What's your advice? How do you not listen to the noise? It's so much easier said than done. It's so uh, it gets easier. 
like anything else. Do it enough times and it gets easier. Do you, is, like, do you, you go to therapy? Really, is it your therapist that like, I'm, helps no, you with? I don't you go, you just like, in that. your instincts, you're like, fuck everyone. I'm going to no, do it my you. way. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do it's, it your way because, and the people that won't talk to you after that will be jealous that they didn't do what you did. Yeah. There's a lot of jealousy in this world, and a lot of people will resent you for not listening to them. Yep. And they'll like, then they'll resent you for doing something they didn't have the balls to do. Yeah. So just go with your gut. You might make a mistake. Yep. Like, you might, but that's on you. You can't blame that on anybody else. Yeah. We were just talking about this weekend. There was a bunch of people around a table that have had a lot of success. And I asked them if you could come back, everything is the same. There's not, there's only one thing you could change about yourself. Just one thing that's realistic. What would it be? What's the one thing you would change about yourself? Myself in my life, I would change my the lack of confidence I had because I thought I was stupid. Yeah. The things that I didn't do, I would change that. Yeah. Like my la my um, lack of self worth in my life that I still struggle with today. Yeah, it's interesting because even pursuing the cop direction, right? That was as a result of thinking you couldn't go to school. A hundred percent. Because the way people yeah. they limited you based on your belief of just not having the education of something. Dyslex dyslexia, which is prevalent everywhere, and there's so many ways to work around it, right? So, yeah, I think that's that's such a good point. Yeah, I like it. All right, well, we got to wrap. It's got to be your trading secret. So, it's a financial, personal, or professional trading secret you've learned uh, in your course of life. No one can, you know, not a professor can replicate it, or a TikToker can give a tutorial on it. Only given the things you've experienced, your personal trading secret. What's one? Hold thing on. What did Frankie write you? Because I said to, I I text Frankie on the way here because I yeah. knew you would ask me yeah. that. So, what do you think my trading secret would be now that you've gotten to know me? I think your trading secret there's something special about the way that you don't care what other people think and you're not peer pressured into doing things that other people want you to even if your ego tells you to like i think like so many people I think ego right? is is most people's demise yeah yes ego is the detriment and it feels like you don't ever let your ego no. lead and your ego within your ex your ego could le easily lead but it's like your logic leads and your intuition leads. And you're like, no, you know what? Yeah, he's an ex-husband. Yeah, there's probably issues that the world doesn't know about, but he's still a father, right? 100%. And it's still important that he's involved. So it's like you think at a, you're thinking and seeing a larger picture than most people can operate on. Well, I want people to know that don't ever make a decision while you're emotional. Yeah. Emotions do not travel in rational channels. Yeah. So I went to therapy only once when okay. I was getting divorced and I like dragged my kids in there. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't yeah. know a divorced person in my life. Like yeah. the family I don't come from. And she said to me, she said, just, uh, just remember emotions don't travel in rational channels. Mm -hmm. So when everybody around me is screaming, mm -hmm. I never jump over everybody to try to prove my point because now everyone's yelling. Yeah. So I wait for everyone to calm down and then I like talk. But, okay. but um, th I think the biggest mistakes I've made in life were during my most vulnerable times. Don't make any decisions during then. I like it. I mean, I think that's a good trading secret. When you're emotional, get regulated and then get involved. Yeah, like, like don't I'm jump right in. I don't jump right into that anything. Could be it. Do you, do we have anything from Frankie or no, Okay. Okay. Do we, do you want to take that as your trading secret? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. Good. Yeah. Okay, we'll take that one. All right. You already said you don't know. I got to ask one more time. Money Mafia has asked me 1500 times. Well, last question. Real Housewives, New Jersey. We're going to see it again. It's the last question. <sighs> I'm putting it out into the universe. Yes. 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 There that's, we go. That's what I'm going to say. Positive yes. manifestation. You will see us again. We'll be back stronger than ever. And just wait. Just wait. You'll first be on Traders, maybe 2025 Real Housewives of New Jersey. More to come. But Dolores, you are a fan favorite. Miss Congeniality. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on this episode of Trade Secrets. Thank you for having me.